G'day, Nigel from Sax School here. Today we're going to talk about rhythm words and what these are are some ideas, some clues, some tips to help you with deciphering rhythms and remembering rhythms as you're going through. Because, you know, to be honest with you, when you're starting out reading music, it's quite confusing. There's lots of different rhythm combinations and it's tricky to know and to remember them as you're going through. So what we're talking about today are some ideas that are going to help you using a simple system. And the system uses words. Now, the words are basically clues or um, reminders of how rhythms goes. And now I'm Australian, so we're going to use some Australian words. Have a bit of fun with this and let's see if it can help you a bit. Let's start right at the very beginning. If you look at the most simple note in music, we're going to see a single note. A single note by itself. It could be a crotchet or a quarter note. And let's use the word shark as the clue for this one. In fact, you know what? You could use that for a two count note or a four count note. Basically any individual note by itself, shark. And then if we look at two quavers or two eighth notes, we'll use the word Bondi, Bondi. Now, if you put them together in a piece of music, you'll see what I mean about how this works. So in this piece of music, if we went through it in time with a beat like this, it would go like this, shark, Bondi, shark, Bondi. So if we, let's try that one more time. Shark, Bondi, shark, Bondi. So you can see from the rhythm of the words, we've got the rhythm of the music, and that's really what we're talking about here. So let's look at something a little bit more complicated. This rhythm here has got two semiquavers followed by a quaver, or two sixteenths followed by an eighth note. And we're going to use the word jellyfish. So if you have a listen to this in rhythm, jellyfish. Jellyfish. It's got that da-da-da sound. If we swap it around the other way, it's going to look like this, and we can use the word kingfisher. Kingfisher. So let's bung those into a piece of music and see how it works like that. So on the first bit here we've got kingfisher and then another kingfisher and then we've got a jellyfish and we'll finish it off with a shark. So let's try it in tempo now. This is our beat. You can try it with me if you like. Here we go. And kingfisher, kingfisher, jellyfish, shark. Should we try it again? Kingfisher, kingfisher, jellyfish, shark. So you can see again from the rhythm of the words, we've got the rhythm of the music and that's what we're trying to do here. Something else you're going to see quite commonly in music are triplets. And triplets are where we have three notes in the time of two notes. So in this example, we've got three eighth notes or three quavers. And in total, those three quavers are going to happen in the time of two quavers or one full beat. So we've got that dot, 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 dot sort of sound. And we can use the word kangaroo. It works. Why not? Kangaroo, kangaroo, kangaroo. The trick here is that all three of those notes are even, so they're the same length each. Uh, something else you're going to see quite commonly are groups of four notes, semiquavers, or sixteenth notes. And here we're going to use the word kookaburra. Kookaburra. So let's bung those two things together and see how that sounds. So in this example, we've got triplet on the first beat, kangaroo, followed by a kookaburra, then another kangaroo, and then another kookaburra. So if we do that in time, three, four, kangaroo, kookaburra, kangaroo, kookaburra. See how that works. Let's try it again. Kangaroo, kookaburra, kangaroo, kookaburra. Now that rhythm, if you're just starting out, can be quite difficult to work out if you don't use a word clue like that. So I think this is really going to help you. Now, if we take our quavers and our semiquavers and we combine them together to make some compound rhythms, we can also use words. This is one example. In this rhythm, we've got uh, two quavers followed by two sixteenth notes and another quaver, or two quavers followed by two semiquavers and a quaver, two eighth notes followed by two sixteenth notes and, a and an eighth note. And we're going to use the word duck-billed platypus, duck-billed platypus, duck-billed platypus. And that, the sound of the rhythm of that word gives you the rhythm of the music perfectly. Something else you come across which are quite complicated to work out are groups of five notes. Now just like your triplets, there's three in the time of two, in a quintuplet or a group of five notes like this, all five of those semiquavers happen in one beat. And the word aboriginal, aboriginal works really well on that. Groups of five can be quite confusing to work out at the start, so it's great to have a word like this so it can help you. Now, if we bung those two things together into a pattern, um, let's see how that works together. So on the first beat, we've got a duck-billed platypus aboriginal, and we'll stick a shark for good measure at the end of the bar. 
In the next bar, we've got Aboriginal Duck Build Platypus Shark. Lots of compound, tricky rhythms in there. Let's try doing that in time. Here we go. And Duck Build Platypus Aboriginal Shark. Aboriginal Duck Build Platypus Shark. It's a tricky one, that one. Let's try that one more time. Duck Build Platypus Aboriginal Shark. Aboriginal Duck Build Platypus Shark. That is a really tricky rhythm, but using the words, you can get the rhythm from the sound of the words, it's gonna help you understand the music. Now, one other thing I wanna tell you about are swung rhythms. So if you're playing jazz music, swing music, you're gonna come across swing rhythms. And swing music is always, or the swing rhythms are always marked in music using this symbol here, which is two quavers equals a, a swung um, triplet. So instead of going bop, 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 we've got do, 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 like that. And I like to use the word dingo. Dingo, 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 that kind of thing. In fact, if we look at this example, that's exactly what we've got. Let's try singing through this one. Dingo, 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 kangaroo shark. So you can see that dingo, dingo, that gives you the rhythm of a swung rhythm. So let's try combining some of these ideas together now because the thing about all the things I've shown you in this lesson is that you can mix them up, mix and match and combine them to help you to decipher rhythms as you're going through reading music. So let's have a look at this one. Now we can see that it's a swung rhythm and on the first beat we've got dingo followed by another dingo. We've got our kingfisher, aboriginal, kangaroo, dingo, dingo and a shark at the end. So let's try doing all of that in time. Here we go, one, two, three, and. Dingo, dingo, kingfisher, aboriginal, kangaroo, dingo, dingo, shark. That's a real tricky one, let's try that one again. So three, four. Dingo, dingo, kingfisher, aboriginal, kangaroo, dingo, dingo, shark. We'll try that one one more time, three. Four, dingo, dingo, kingfisher, aboriginal, kangaroo, dingo, dingo, shark. That is a really tricky rhythm. And, and if you were just presented with that and you're starting to learn rhythms, it would probably be quite overwhelming. But I hope you can see that using these rhythm words, it's really going to help you to get a handle on these rhythms and understand them as you're going through. So I hope this has helped you. And don't forget you can combine those rhythms in, uh, those rhythm words in any combination or just use them one at a time when you come across a tricky rhythm. Keep practicing hard. I'll see you on the next lesson.